Now that we know we have a misfire, we know the cylinder is number six. Number eight also had some misses in the shop, said both of these cylinders were missing. I really want to look at the ignition waveforms to get a better idea of what we're looking for. We're going to take the eScope Pro and we're going to connect the eight leads of the eScope Pro into the eight coils of this F-150. We've connected the eScope Pro to the connector at the PCM. This is always a very easy place to get connections into the coils on these five fours. The top row of wires is always the ignition coil wires. They're right in a row and it makes it really easy. Now, since I didn't get a wiring diagram out, I don't know that number one is connected to number one. I just connected them all up. I really don't care which one's which. All I care about is when I see one of them failing on an ignition analyzer, then we'll look at the color and we'll look at which coil that color goes to. It saves time sometimes to not have to look up different wiring diagrams. Now, we always want to look at diagrams, but in this case, this is going to be a quick, effective method to diagnose this vehicle. Now that we've connected the eScope Pro, the eight leads from the unit into the eight coils of the primary at the PCM, what we need to do is configure the e-ignition analyzer. So let's take a look at the software. First we need to come over to the input and we need to make all of these say primary. Once we make all these say primary, then the system will find the right thing and then we need to invert all the traces. We're going to go to the scope and now we need to start the car. Now that we've started this engine up, let's take a look at some of the data. We want to come over to the dual chart A and we want to bring this down so we got a little bit better look at what the waveforms are doing. What I'm interested in is this waveforms right in here and right in here. So we want to see who's popping up and who's creating a problem. There's more than one cylinder that would appear to be a problem, but what we're going to do now is we're going to bring up the misfire software. We already had him running. So he's running now and we're going to watch him count while we watch what happens live on the screen. Now multiple cylinders are having a problem, but the purple one has turbulence in it. Let's go back and take a look right here. We'll go back in time. Do you see this purple came way high with these oscillations right here? We'll play it back through. You can see how the other ones are doing. You can see purple right there. Now purple has a problem and I've got turbulence in the waveform. What we need to do now is figure out what coil this purple one is connected to. Let's take a look. As we can see, the purple wire is connected into the orange yellow wire. Let's look at the coils and see which one that is. The orange yellow wire is on cylinder number six. We've checked the ignition and we see high turbulence on number six. It makes me think that we have some type of a valve sealing issue on the number six cylinder. In order to find the problem, we're going to use a very basic hose, a pressure hose, like you would do with a compression test, except we're not going to put a gauge on it. We're going to put a pressure transducer. We're going to now put this into the cylinder and connect this to the e-misfire software for compression and we'll be able to see if those valves have a problem or not. Let's do that. We need to take the number six coil out. We'll remove the coil from the vehicle. We need to take the spark plug out now. If you notice on the Ford 3 valves, they're going to need a special fitting in order to get into the head. If you've noticed, the spark plug also is very special. So now that we have the right fitting for the unit, we're going to screw it in. Don't over tighten it. All it needs to do is be snug. We'll now put the pressure transducer on it and we're ready to get a reading. We're going to also connect this minus 30 pressure transducer into the engine. 
This will read the vacuum. We'll simply remove the hose from the brake booster and install it. Now we're ready to get a reading from the vacuum circuit. Before we do a cranking compression test, we want to do one thing on the tailpipe transducer. We want to use the straight blue hose with springs on it. We're going to take the amplifier off and we're going to take and we're going to put on this hose and put it in the tailpipe. This will give us better pressure pulsation during cranking. We're going to now set up the Misfire software in order to look at compression. Let's take a look at how we're going to do that. First, we want to open the software, so we're going to come down to Misfire. We're going to go to Window, and we're going to make this a full window. We're going to go to Configuration. We're going to change it to Compression. We're going to say we, saw, we got the motor selected. We're going to say Begin Analysis. I want to come to the Measure screen. We want to come in and we want to look at Strip Chart Roll Mode, which it's in. We're going to turn on the two other circuits for the pressure in the cylinder is green and the vacuum in the manifold is blue. So now we're going to do a cranking compression test on this motor. Now that we've done a cranking compression test, what we want to do is we want to come and pause the data. Then we want to go to process this data and we're going to smooth it. This is a boxcar style filter that smooths data. Notice how even all the compression hits are. Again, notice that you have 147 pounds of cranking pressure compared to 139 within 5%. Very, very good wouldn't show any problems as far as a cranking test at all. We can go in and we can look. The towers aren't leaning. All the pockets look good. What we want to do is we want to get the cursors and we want to mark through top dead center to through top dead center. Now we want to take the zoom window and we want to come down and we want to zoom on the lower portion of the screen where we can amplify the vacuum and the tailpipe pressure. We're going to come in and we're going to zoom again now right here on the pressure for the intake, do you see how all of these are real even? I don't see any kind of a problem. The exhaust is showing a couple of problems, but nothing that's relatively large to where it would be easily seen. I don't see anything really wrong with the exhaust. Let's go ahead and we're going to zoom in on the intake again, and we're going to look at the intake, and we can see that the intake pulls are pretty good. The transfer position on this one has dropped a little bit, this one didn't pull as good. My transfer is lower. We pull back up. And again, we have one right here. Now, if we divide the two cursors in half right here, this, these are my poles where this valve is going to be open. And I don't see any real leakage. This does not show that I have a problem yet with the cylinder. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a running test. So we're going to start this car up, and we're going to run it. Now that we've started this F-150, we'll look at the data that's coming in. What we first want to do is we want to go and we want to go to analyze data. This will give us an idea of what's going on. Right away, do you see how these are popping up and down? This is the pressure changing. Now the cam timing is at about 25 degrees or so, and I expect these normally to be, actually it's 21, so that's good. About 22, 23 is real good. Look at how round this pocket is right here. This pocket is very round, showing that the exhaust seat is not seating. What we want to do is let's go ahead and we're going to put it into this mode and we want to do a snap test as well. Now let's look over this data. We're going to pause the data. We're going to process the data. We want to smooth it. There's a basic boxcar style of filter. And then we're going to come in and we're going to zoom in and we're going to take a piece and we're going to look through this. Right away, do you see how the tops of each pressure stroke is all over the place? So as we go through this, it's obvious that we have a problem. When you have a pressure spike that's high dropping low to the very next cylinder and high again, the throttle valve cannot do this. 
And the only way that, that this can change is the volume contents within the cylinder is changing. Here you have several that didn't do it, and here we've got a low one, we've got a low one. So what we want to do now is we want to go in and we want to look at the pockets at the bottom. What I'm interested in is to look at the pocket down here. Now right away, when we're looking at these, we'll blow these up just a little bit better so we can see what we're doing. Do you see how these pockets is changing? Do you see this cut on this side? And it's round. Now this side is also very rounded. On these motors, we usually have very peaky styles. But do you see how these pockets have changed from cycle to cycle to cycle? Also notice that the pocket is higher and lower. When it went lower, it's actually leaking. Notice how the pocket formed down and came up and is very sharp, where the other pockets, I've got a divot on this side, and we can come across and we can start to see that this one is smoother without having so much deformation in it. Again, do you see this big notch here and a notch on this side? I'm always looking for notches on each side of the pocket. That's a very good indication that we have some type of a valve failing. Again, we can see the notch. And the problem, the biggest thing you want to do when you're looking at these is look for changing, changing in the exhaust pockets. Do you see how right here we have a cut, a flat bottom has occurred? Now normally on a car, and here we've got a big cut, always look for the larger cuts over time. I'm always interested in how long it happens. If you have an anomaly that's a millisecond or so, I'm way less worried about that. When I have five milliseconds right over here, 5.69 milliseconds, that is a big cut. That's a valve not seating. So now we know that the valve is not seating. This engine needs to be taken apart. Now that we've diagnosed this F-150 5.43 valve engine, and we know an exhaust valve is bad, now is what's really interesting is you could see during the cranking test, this is perfect you cannot see the problem. The reason for that is the engine is cranking over at 100 RPMs. Once it's idling, it's at 800 RPMs. That's eight times that. So what really happens is the valve starts to move so rapidly that it cannot seat correctly. During the unseated position, we will have a misfire from turbulent flame out. It isn't that I don't have enough pressure, it's that I create turbulence because the leak allows a certain portion of the charge that's being compressed to leak out a valve. I get unwanted turbulence in the cylinder and it blows this flame out. This is a very difficult problem. Is What makes this possible is the pressure transducers. The pressure transducers will find the impossible. This is a problem that is very difficult to find. The shop's already done the heads but the machine shop did not do the job correctly. This valve is not seating. As it warms up, it seats more and more and more. When it's cold, it's worse. Makes me think that the valve is out of round, that something's wrong with that valve. The valve just isn't seating. We know that. How do you find this? How do you know you gotta take the head off again? The E-misfire detector is the way to do this accurately and quickly.